I'm going to be honest. I've never thought we were going to see what we saw yesterday, which was at least one team that we know, which is the Atlanta Falcons, who a report came out within an hour of Lamar James, uh, uh, Lamar Jackson, pardon me, getting the non-exclusive franchise tag. And a report came out that said the Atlanta Falcons are not in on yeah. Lamar Jackson. Not in. They knew this within an hour of the of the tag being applied. And the official social media handle of the team retweeted it. Retweeted a report that said, we're not in on Lamar Jackson. I've never thought we would see that. First of all, you could say nothing. Yeah. To your point, you don't have to say anything. Secondly, the Atlanta Falcons were a team I think a lot of people believed could be in the market for Lamar Jackson. And for them to come out to say, we're not in, I thought was fascinating. So what I think and what I think you could draw some conclusions is that not just the Falcons, but other NFL owners saw the Deshaun Watson contract of $230 million guaranteed and said, oh, shoot. Because if that becomes the norm, when my guy comes up and I have a franchise quarterback, this is going to be the starting point of the negotiation, just the starting point. So I can't afford that. I don't want to put that much money away in an account where I can't touch it because it's all guaranteed money. So many business implications. So I think that the league could hold steady on this and no one offer Lamar Jackson, Deshaun Watson, or more. Right, but what's to stop them from offering less than Deshaun Watson? Now well, it's could. open season. Yeah, but then also then the Ravens could match if they felt like it. And mm. Lamar Jackson goes back to the Ravens, and it's like this whole fever dream never happened. So there's a couple questions I have off of this. Why yeah. not put in a low ball offer? Well, you can, and people might. Then if people might, but so then basically – we're saying that some teams might come in with a deal. It's just not as much as yeah, we thought. Yeah, but what happens whenever That's there's like. more than one team who's coming in? You get a bidding war. Things are moving up and up and up. That's why you create a market for yourself. Yeah, but I don't know how this works with a franchise tag because basically whoever makes the biggest offer, biggest tender offer, gets him or they're matched by the Ravens. So if I'm even, I even had a thought. I, I'm, Thirty-two million is the non-exclusive tag. That's yep. one year for. That's what he would get this year. If he plays on just a one-year I know they don't have space, but I, I think the Bengals should make a one-year $45 million. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you want to get yeah, your if rival it's, ticked if, off at you. If it's that cheap, I think somebody's going to make some kind of offer. Because here's the thing. There's this the word collusions on the air. Like all the owners are working together to make sure Lamar Jackson doesn't ca get paid that much. Yeah. Why do people think all the owners like all the other owners that are working in tandem? They're super competitive with each other. Super competitive, and also they are notorious for screwing each other over. Yes, they are, but what is the one thing that unites all of them together, if anything? They don't like people messing with their money. Yeah, but They didn't start going after Dan Snyder yeah. until it turned out that he was possibly withholding funds from the rest of the owners. That, that still hasn't happened, I know. But they didn't publicly put it out there that they want him out until they start messing with the money. And I think they don't want players... Like, why does the franchise tag exist in the first place? It's they, to suppress salaries. Right, right, right. But they, first of all, there have already been two guaranteed contracts, so it's not going to be the first guaranteed contract. Right. Kirk Cousins had one and, and Deshaun Watson had yeah, one. Yeah, so there could easily be a third coming anytime. It might not be Lamar Jackson. Yeah. I, I think the— But the, you know what we're talking about. We're talking about guaranteed and the Deshaun-level money. Kirk Cousins yeah, which, was $90 I think million. A, 90, yeah, at the time it was— pretty groundbreaking it was a big you're saying that wasn't a big deal that was a it was huge a big deal, deal but it wasn't it it wasn't it didn't break the bank in a way that deshaun watson said. i think the way this process is going to play out is going to eventually get lamar jackson his market value i just don't think i think one of the reasons teams are not interested in him because i don't know that people want to pay this huge salary for lamar jackson i don't think he's worth it i think there are other quarterbacks who are more worth it the other thing is say you're a team like atlanta or carolina who's in the draft, are you really going to want to take on Lamar Jackson's second contract? you got none of the first contract. So right. why are you going to put a $250 million deal that handcuffs you forever? I think you could look at each case individually and say, ah, this makes sense. This makes sense. So for me, I think the link between all the teams acting together for the good of the league and guaranteed contract, trust me, if it was Joe Burrow was out there and he wanted a guaranteed contract, someone would give him a guaranteed contract. Well, I guarantee you that. Well, I don't know, but this is the thing. I think that this is the message, right? 
if Lamar Jackson doesn't get the 230 guaranteed, let's just put it at Deshaun Watson, say he doesn't get that same number, does that discourage the next guy from even asking for it? Because look at what's happened now over the last two years. This has not been pleasant for anybody. Lamar Jackson, the Baltimore Ravens, they've been going back and forth. It's unique because Lamar doesn't have an agent, but at the same time, like this is the last thing you want to put yourself and your fan base through. So I think it just shows the next guy like, hey, this isn't going to happen because Russell Wilson didn't get a fully guaranteed contract and Kyler oh Murray God. didn't get a fully Russell guaranteed Wilson contract. Should be, contract. He should be arrested for highway robbery <laughs> on his contract. I know. It's like, looks like he basically went into Denver with a mask and a gun. But here's the thing. It's like those guys – are not the caliber of Lamar Jackson. No, no, no. That's but Joe true. Burrow would be more, uh, obviously, yeah. they're more in the same tier. Him and Herbert is more in the same tier, who's also up for a contract this offseason. Yeah. I think they want to discourage the next guy. It's not happening. You're not getting Deshaun Watson. Watson was an outlier. I think that's the message that mm. the owners want to send. Hell, Steve Bashotti, the owner of the Ravens, came out after the Deshaun Watson contract and said this is bad for the league. Right, but I think, first of all, I think Wilson, Watson was definitely worth more than Lamar Jackson. There's, in my mind, no doubt, he's a better better player, and he does have the injury history. I know he has the baggage, but I don't think teams <laughs> care because look at that bidding war. That was crazy. You don't think Atlanta was close? I don't know. We have no idea what their final offer Cleveland had to pay a premium because Deshaun didn't want to go to Cleveland, yeah. so they had to pay a little extra. That's the thing. Lamar wants to get in this open bidding war. It's not open because of the, the tag. But think about Deshaun Watson. Yeah. Like he, he wasn't that great coming back this year, and are we sure he's even going to be good? But we see we he wasn't a top he left as a top five quarterback. All that stuff happened and he returned and was not a top five quarterback. Right, but he hadn't played in two years and he came on a pretty banged up weird team and still won some games. I mean he was fine. I I think why and I also think Wilson was probably But you're not paying two hundred fifty million for fine. Wilson's probably I don't think like Watson is a no brainer better than Wilson was after when when Deborah was looking and Wilson was very valuable. He was very good. He's thirty three, uh Hall of Fame level player. I think they're pretty comparable. I mean, obviously, Russell's going to waltz into the Hall of Fame. I don't know if Lamar Jackson will. Well, I mean, he's off to a pretty good start with the MVP already under his belt. But not all MVPs get in the Hall. I know that. Yeah. But he's also 26. Yeah, We've but got everyone... so much more to. He's got so much more. Listen, I get that he missed 10 games the last yeah. two years. But we've had guys who have missed time in their careers and gone on and also had fully healthy seasons, too. It's not like... I mean, the idea that, like, Lamar Jackson now has no value or is, like... No, he's got a lot of value, but... That's crazy. But you're you're comparing him to pretty high-end guys, so... I think he deserves to be in that company, don't you? I mean, where would you... Would you put him in the top five most valuable quarterbacks or top ten? I'd put him right around there. So, I mean, you go through the list. uh, Yeah, I think Mahomes and Burrow and Allen, I think... Jalen Hurts may have played his way into that conversation. I think Trevor Lawrence will be right around there. And I think Herbert, yeah, and Lamar. So maybe you have five, six, what are we quibbling about? I mean, these are guys who are going to make massive money. The only problem is Lamar has so many carries on his legs, and I think teams are worried about that. He has sort of running back carries. He's the all-time most prolific running quarterback. There's no doubt. No one's even close to carrying as many times as he does a game. So that that definitely weighs into it. He's been hurt the last two seasons. If he was coming off two 16-game seasons, this money would be it be in his bank account. I, I might agree with you there. It'd be more of a no-brainer, I think, for the Ravens if he had been healthy the whole or, time. Or you think if he was if he had played two, you think Atlanta would have put out that press release? <laughs> no, of course not. Listen, Atlanta might have other strategies. Right? Yeah, they want to draft a guy. It now, now sounds like maybe that. Or maybe they want to wait till next year and try to get on Caleb oh, right. Williams. There good, could good be a, a lot of other things, but this. It's starting to feel like it might not pass the now, smell let me ask test. You one, more, one more. Daniel Snyder is still the owner of the Commanders. Yeah. He's going to play ball with all other 31 owners and say, I'm not giving a guy. What does he care about the other owners? He hates their guts right now. I know, but you, why does he offer them? So whether or not you think he's going to actually sell the team, I don't know. But generally, the outgoing owner doesn't tie the franchise to massive money right on their way out the door. Well, I know. But are you talking about Lamar Jackson's? kids? Or are you talking about Lamar Jackson? Because I don't see Daniel Snyder going anywhere. <laughs> well, he might 